It's very unusual um, to um, begin at what is really the end of the Christmas narrative, um, but I think beginning to think of the wonder of a star in the season is a wonderful place to begin as we enter the season because um, I want us to think about what it is that we're getting ready for and what are we following um, as we anticipate the season of love. And so let us read together from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. Listen now for the word of the Lord. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the ter territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem, and they asked, Where is the one born the King of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. And they said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote, You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah. Because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search carefully for the child. And when you found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. And when they heard the king, they went and they looked. The star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and they saw the child with Mary his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. Brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord our God, we thank you and we praise you for the gift of a star. We praise you for the gift of your son Jesus. We praise you for this season of wonder and awe, the season of the mystery of you revealing yourself to us. Bless us now as we continue to worship and meditate upon your word. We ask it all in Christ Jesus' name. But 
she packed the candles for Christmas and then put them in the attic. And every year when we opened the boxes, the Christmas candles had melted and we'd have to get new ones every year. But that smell, I associate that smell with the sense of wonder and awe. I remember pulling out those decorations and the stories that my mom would tell us about when you were babies. We didn't have many decorations and your daddy and I went to Woolworths and brought this set of decorations. Remember Woolworths? I remember the awe and the wonder of thinking about um, presents. And a few years back, Maria brought me J.C. Penny catalogs because I talked about as a kid flipping through the J.C. Penny catalog at Christmas time, um, thinking about what it was I was going to ask Santa to bring me, and the wonder and the awe of being in our house and being in church, and especially on Christmas Eve. There's something that's different about worshiping on Christmas Eve. It's not just that we dim the lights. It's not just that we see people, see people that we only see um, once a year. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit that makes that a time of wonder and a time of awe. What if during this season leading up to Christmas, we thought about the wonder of Christmas and we tried to rediscover that wonder for ourselves all over again? Think about things that astound you that you've seen a million times before. I'll pick up a leaf sometimes, and sometimes you'll think, oh, another leaf has fallen off of my tree just when I had finished raking. How many of you have done that about five times this year? Just when you got all the leaves up, the wind came along and blew down more. But if you pick up that leaf and you look at it, instead of it being a nuisance that you have to clean up again, take the time to look at it. the handiwork of that leaf that God created it in such a way that it could get nourishment from the branch that it was attached to, the branch that was attached to the tree, that was attached to the roots that was down in the ground where it received its nourishment and brought it all the way up through that whole system into that amazing leaf that you hold in your hand. Be filled with awe and wonder of the things that surround you that you see all of the time that you sometimes miss. So during the season of Advent this year, we're going to look at the wonder of Christmas. And today we begin with the wonder of a star. And then next week we'll celebrate the wonder of a name. We'll celebrate the wonder of a manger and the wonder of a promise. Those are our four themes for the season. But as we think about the wonder of the star, um, let us think about too that all of the things that uh, fill us with awe in this season lead us to the real wonder, and that is the wonder of a child that God sent, or that God himself came to us in this child because he loves us and he longs to be with us. So when we think about the wonder of a star, we think either of shepherds or wise men. Today I want us to think about the wise men, and what is it exactly that gives them the title of wise? Why were they considered to be wise? I think maybe the wise men were wise because they knew that they could follow something and invest them, in, themselves into something that would give them something that they didn't already have. So often I think you and I long for things. What do you long for? One of our kids today is longing for a motorcycle for Christmas. Guess what Santa's bringing me? And I said, uh, you mean a toy motorcycle? He says, a motorcycle. I said, you mean a toy motorcycle? And he said, no, a real motorcycle that I can ride on. That's part of his wonder and his awe. But it's something that he's really longing for. Maybe you're longing um, for all those decorations to like instantly put themselves up. Maybe you're longing um, for the people that you'll be able to see. Maybe you're longing for something and you're not even really sure what it is you're longing for. The wise men were wise because God gave them a sign and they followed it. The star that they followed led them to something that was greater than something that they already had. The wise men were wise because they followed the star to Christ Jesus. But not only that, but as we think about what we know about the wise men, we know that they came from a long distance away. We know that they were very wealthy and they were very learned. 
They had so much wealth that they could invest um, taking themselves on a two-year journey to find the Christ child. We know that, that it was two years before the wise men arrived at the manger. How, how long have you done something or sought after something for two years, not knowing what it would be that you would find? But they saw it because they were longing for something different than what they already had. They had power. They had riches already. But they were longing for something more. The wise men saw the star. You see stars, don't you? Hopefully just at night time. <laughs> uh, they saw stars and they knew the stars of the sky. They had studied the stars, but they noticed when this one star was brighter than all others. Now the star was there for everyone to see, but they had eyes to see because they were longing for something different. As you long for this season, I pray that God would give you the eyes to see the unknown that he has for you, the blessing that he has for you, and especially the relationship that he has for you in the Christ child. Interesting part of the story I hadn't thought about a whole lot before, and that is that when the wise men go to Herod looking for the child that would be born, in those days, legend had it that there would be some anom not some event in the sky where um, a, the birth of a king was announced. And so when they saw that star, they anticipated that it celebrated the birth of a king. And so they followed that star. It was pretty close to Jerusalem. And that was the, um, the place where the palace was. So there's no wonder that the wise men went to the palace because they were looking for a king. When Herod is told that they had followed the star and that it announced the birth of the Messiah, he had no desire to follow because he wanted just what he had. He wanted his power. He wanted his riches. And he knew that if he stepped down and if he followed the wise men, that he would have to give up something. Sometimes longing for something more causes us to have to change. In this season of longing and wonder, will you follow the star? Will you follow the signs that will lead you to Christ? And when you find him, will you know that you have found something beyond what you could ever have imagined? The wise men had the courage to follow a star. We know that it took a long time to find um, that star, to find the babe, to follow the star. But what they found caused them change. You cannot encounter Jesus Christ and stay the same. And yet, sometimes as you think about this season, maybe you're thinking of what you're longing for and, and you're wanting more and more. You're wanting more of the same. But what if you step off of the throne of your life? And look for that thing that Christ wants to reveal to you and himself. I promise you, it will cause you change. And you might say, well, I don't want to change. I don't want to change. I don't want to be responsible. I remember one of our confirmation students, I was talking to them about the difference between just hanging out at church and becoming a member of, of the church. As they were getting ready to join the church, and I said, there's responsibility now. There's responsibility for you to be there. There's a responsibility for you to give your time and your talents and your gifts to the church. There is a responsibility for you to represent who Jesus is in this world. And this one student said, but I don't want to be responsible. Don't we do that? Don't we do that in our lives? I don't want to be responsible. I don't want to change. I don't want to give up what I have. But Christ calls us to follow him. Because he can offer us more than we could ever, ever imagine. When the wise men had followed long enough that they actually found the Christ child, immediately they fell down and they worshipped him. Sometimes I picture that scene, you know, a little different. You know, Mary and Joseph have halos around their heads. And baby Jesus is sitting there quietly and perfect. He's the savior of the world. 
How many two-year-olds and two-year-old homes do you imagine really are like that? Imagine what it would have really been like when Jesus is now in a home with his family. He's two years old. Who, who has a two-year-old kid? That's um, Colin's one and a half. So they're starting to tool around. They're starting to make words. They're starting to get in and out of things. What do they call them? The wonderful twos? Oh, they call them the terrible twos. Imagine Jesus being two years old. And yet, when the wise men saw him, they knew. There was something about his very essence that even as a little two-year-old, terrible two-toddler, they fell down and they worshipped him. In this season, I'm wondering what sign God will give you. And I'm wondering if you will have the courage and the wisdom to follow the sign that God gives you. Because when God gives us a sign, it's an invitation. Signs lead us to God. Think of the signs that you've had. You, how many of you have ever held a newborn baby? Maybe I should ask who's not held a newborn baby. And, and what's, you haven't, Jacob? Next time somebody in this church has a baby, I'm going to ask their mama if this, you know, really clumsy 14-year-old boy can hold their baby. <laughs> um, you got to do it sometimes because it's an amazing thing to see a brand new life. Can you imagine the awe and wonder when you think about that? Sometimes the awe and wonder and the sign that God gives you is in a time of tragedy or difficulty. And even though it's hard to follow those signs and it's hard to get through those times, they lead you to God. Sometimes maybe it's nature that's the sign for you. Maybe you've seen something around you uh, that fills you with awe and it will lead you to God. In this season, I challenge you to experience the wonder and the awe. And I encourage you to have the wisdom to follow the sign. And when you have found Christ, I encourage, encourage you to worship him. For he is worthy of our worship and our praise. Let us pray.